Apart from gifts and birthday cards, stumbling upon a bill on the street, or winning a game show, people don't often get money for basically free. But there are ways to make the money you have grow. Last episode, we looked at one way of calculating the cost of borrowing or lending money called simple interest, which is mathematically easy to deal with. But if you're looking to make the most of your money, there's a more effective way out there that also comes up a lot more often. Compound interest. Compound interest requires a bit more thinking to wrap your head around, but it can have dramatic effects on the actual cost of borrowing or lending money. In fact, the impact of compound interest is so powerful and shows up so often that some people have supposedly called it the eighth wonder of the world. That's because understanding how compound interest works can make or break key financial decisions like whether you should spend, save, or invest your money. And like so many other things we've covered in this course, the problem-solving techniques and ability to sum up complex issues with a single handy equation are the keys to achieving that mastery. Because math doesn't just help us make sense of the world, it can also help us make sense. I'm Jason Guglielmo, and this is Study Hall Real World College Math. Last episode, we talked about interest, which is the fee associated with borrowing or lending money. Specifically, we explored simple interest, which is a type of interest that's a percentage of the original amount borrowed, called the principal, and stays the same over the life of the loan. Like, if you earn $30 in interest the first year, it'll be $30 each year. But if you're looking for a loan or to save some money, more often than not, you're going to counter another type of interest called compound interest. With compound interest, the fee someone pays to borrow money changes over time. One place you may have already encountered compound interest in your day-to-day -day life is a savings account. Say I put $1,000 into a savings account with a 3% interest rate compounded yearly. I'm basically lending the bank money, so that means that after the first year, the bank would have to pay me back my $1,000 plus 3% of $1,000, or $30, as a fee for holding my money. But in the second year, instead of just looking at that original $1,000 when calculating the interest, the bank looks at what my current total is. Right now, it's $1,030. So they owe me 3% of $1,030, or about $31, which is slightly larger than our first interest payment. It doesn't seem like much of a difference after just two years, but the amount of interest I'm earning actually grows exponentially, which means it gets bigger and bigger each year. And assuming you're not taking any money out, the actual amount that the interest changes gets bigger each year. To see the difference between simple and compound interest in action, let's consider Piotr and Kalyan, two neighbors who are borrowing money from a local cooperative bank. Piotr is an amateur fitness enthusiast and garage tinkerer who's developed a new kind of lightweight, sturdy gymnastic ring. He figures if he can fine-tune the manufacturing process and develop them in large quantities, he can sell them to great success. To get his business idea off the ground, he applies to the cooperative bank for a $3,000 loan. Shinran, the loan manager at his local branch inspects his business plans and decides to approve the loan with a compound interest rate of 4%. That same year, his neighbor Kalyan, who directed amateur plays at university, is dismayed to hear the local high school has canceled its drama lessons. Some parents in her community tell her they'd gladly pay for their kids' involvement in extracurricular drama classes, so she decides to take up the mantle and provide evening workshops. But to rent a venue, props, costumes, and technical gear for the workshops, she needs money to cover the initial costs, which she'll hopefully make back later from the class fees. After crunching some numbers, she works out that she'll also need $3,000 to get started. Approaching Shinran at the bank, she also gets her loan approved, but with a 4% simple interest since the co-op bank gives favorable terms to social enterprises. After the first year, both Kalyan and Piotr owe the bank the original $3,000 plus $120 in interest. But next year, their accounts start to look different. Remember, for loans that involve simple interest, the interest paid every year is exactly the same. So Callie Ann owes 4% of her principal, or $120 in interest, every year. So after two years, adding that to the $3120 she owes from the previous year, her total debt comes up to $3,240. But Piotr's loan uses compound interest. So at the end of the second year, instead of multiplying the interest rate by the principal, the bank will multiply it by his entire debt, which is $3,120. So 
So he owes about $125 in interest for the second year, bringing his total debt to about $3,245, which is about $5 more than Callie Ann's interest. And the same thing will happen year after year. Callie Ann will always pay $120 in interest, but Piotr's interest payment will keep growing, assuming he doesn't pay off any part of the loan. This is the heart of compound interest. For a lender, whether the amount of money they're owed was part of the principal or interest, the next interest installment treats it all the same. It's all money they're owed and want to be compensated for, which is why it's used by most lenders. But with a different type of interest, we'll need a whole new interest equation by tweaking our formula for simple interest from last episode. And for simplicity, let's assume we're measuring time in years. For a single year, things look the same. We take the principal P and apply the interest rate R to it by multiplying it by the principal and adding it back to the principal. Another way of writing this is to multiply the principal by a factor of one plus R. Since multiplying something by one is the same as starting with what you had, this basically means give me the same as the amount before, but now add the interest. That's just the interest for one year though. So for simple interest, the interest rate also gets multiplied by T for time. We end up with P times one plus RT, because the interest is the same every year. Like if Callie Ann keeps her loan for two years, we know she owes the principal plus 4% interest each year, which is $120 each year for two years. Now for compound interest, instead of simply adding the same amount of interest every year, we have to change the formula so that every year after the first, we apply the interest rate to the entire amount that's owed. So our simple interest formula tells us what we owe on a loan with compound interest after one year. But the second year, we want to multiply that new amount by our one plus R again, so we're taking what we owed after one year and adding the interest on that amount, not just the original principal. For Piotr, after one year, he would owe $3,120, like we calculated before. Then after two years, he'd owe that plus 4% interest on that new amount. And every year, we continue that multiplication process. The total amount owed after, say, five years would be the principal times that one plus R factor five times. And we can make this a little tidier and easier to keep track of. When the same thing multiplies by itself a bunch of times, we can show it using an exponent. As a little reminder, the exponent is the number that represents how many times a number is multiplied by itself, which in this case is five for the five years of interest. And now we can turn this into an equation to find how much will be owed on a compound interest loan for any number of years by replacing that five with a T. Using our formulas, after two years, Piotr owes about $3,245 and Callie Ann owes only $3,240 with her simple interest loan. Let's see what they would each owe five years down the line. Since Callie Ann's loan uses simple interest, we use the same formula as last time. Her principal, $3,000, plus her interest payment times the number of years. That's 3,000 plus 3,000 times her interest rate of 4% times five. That comes out to $3,600. For Piotr's compound interest loan, we'll use our new equation. Plugging everything in, after five years, his loan comes out to about $3,650, $50 more. So compound interest stacks up much faster than simple interest. The reason is that multiplying by numbers greater than one over and over quickly leads to larger numbers than adding numbers of approximately the same size over and over. In fact, you might remember we saw how quickly repeated multiplication stacks up when looking at combinations. And the larger the sums of money we're working with, and the bigger the interest rate, the more radical the outcomes. This might all sound like doom and gloom when it comes to borrowing money, since Piotr would definitely prefer the simple interest rate. But in many cases, interest rates are actually being applied in our favor. The most common example is for bank accounts, like we mentioned before. Many bank accounts offer us interest rates for the privilege of holding our money. And in that case, the magic of compound interest works in our favor since we make more and more money year after year. At any rate, many types of borrowing in the real world involve compound interest, for the logic and reasons we've explored in this episode. Next time, we'll get even more specific and show you how to work out, year on year, the kinds of money you might expect to make when investing that money and reaping the interest for yourself. 
Thanks for watching Study Hall Real World College Math, which is produced by Arizona State University and the Crash Course team at Complexly. If you like this video, give us a like and subscribe. You can learn more about ASU and the videos produced by Crash Course in the links in the description. See you next time.